let's start with the news that actually does affect people's lives. And that is we're about to elect a moron potentially as president of the United States. I'm deeply, deeply concerned. But let's just let's fi- fixate for if we can on the so-called journalists who are asking her questions. I referenced yeah. it. Remember, it wasn't the same panel, but remember the same group, NABJ, and their first question to Donald Trump. Here it is. I want to start by addressing the elephant in the room, sir. A lot of people did not think it was appropriate for you to be here today. You have pushed false claims about some of your rivals, from Nikki Haley to former President Barack Obama, saying that they were not born in the United States, which is not true. You have told four congresswomen of color who were American citizens to go back to where they came from. You have used words like animal and rabbit to describe black district attorneys You've attacked black journalists, calling them a loser, saying the questions that they ask are, quote, stupid and racist. Mm -hmm. You've had dinner with a white supremacist at your Mar-a-Lago resort. So my question, sir, now that you are asking black supporters to vote for you, why should black voters trust you after you have used language like that? Okay, so that's Mm -hmm. how they treated Donald Trump when he was there. I played you that one question that they asked him, her, about her joy. Here's another one from Politico. Watch this. We've seen school closures, yeah. parents worried about their kids leaving the home because of racist conspiracy theories that I won't repeat here, but they have been repeated by um, leaders on um, the Republican side. From your perspective, is this just a case of irredeemable racism that can't be mitigated by any rational action? Or is this a situation in which a federal response could help this community heal? It's a crying shame. I mean, my heart breaks for this community. When you are bestowed with a microphone that is that big, there is a profound responsibility that comes with that that is an extension of what should not be lost in this moment, this concept of the public trust, to then understand what the public trust means. It means that you have been invested with trust to be responsible in the way you use your words, much less how you conduct yourself. And especially when you have been and then seek to be again, President of the United States of America. I know that people are deeply troubled by what is happening to that community in Springfield, Ohio. And it's got to stop. There's so much in there, Dave. (laughs) First of all, it's just a word on the so called report. We're going to dissect it. We have plenty of time. But let me just tell you the person asking that question is Eugene Daniels, works for Politico. He's head of the White House Correspondents Association. He's, he's at the top of it. He is the same guy who accused Brian Kilmeade of racism because of some absolute nothing that was misunderstood yeah. and then had to walk it back when, I mean, Brian was like, what are you talking about? This, so he gets her in front of him. And his question is, We've seen parents worried about their kids leaving the home because of racist conspiracy theories. I'm not going to repeat them. We cut out the part where he specifically referenced Trump and Vance, but he did, trust me. From your perspective, is this just a case of irredeemable racism that can't be mitigated by any rational action? Eugene, tighten it up, please. Or is this a situation in which a federal response could help this community heal? What the the federal response is what caused the problem, Dave. Megan, I don't like to do interviews with a pen in my hand, but you're right, there's just so much here. I had to scribble things down as she was talking. First off, how dare, how dare she talk about the public trust? A woman who at the debate barely 10 days ago lied about Trump's involvement in Project 2025, lied about her position on fracking, lied about Trump and a national abortion ban, lied about Trump and IVF. Like the, the list lied about very fine people. The list goes on and on. But the thing is, when when, when you're critical of the this quote unquote journalist and you're critical of this quote unquote presidential candidate, Kamala Harris. It's like these people are exactly perfect for what they are. There are very few journalists left and you have this woman who does not stand for anything. So she's just a piece in a machine 
to see if the machine can fool us all one more time. We were apparently fooled, or at least I suppose 81 million people were fooled when Joe Biden was elected last time and they told us he was perfectly fine for some reason. I, and I think you were talking about his cognitive ability even before he was elected last time. Uh, but they just want to see how much nonsense they can put out there, how they can launder the lies, because that's exactly what they are doing. If he's concerned that parents don't want their kids going out in urban areas, Areas, it has nothing to do with the crazy racist. It has something to do with the fact that the Democrats, because it's all blue cities and states that it's happening in, are scaling back the police, are allowing drugs on the street, are not arresting people, et cetera, et cetera. But they never want to look in the mirror and think, my God, maybe we are the baddies. Maybe we are the ones who have led to some of this stuff. And then she just gets out there and just gives, as you pointed out, prepackaged meaningless drivel. You know, there was another line, and you can stop me if you're going to show the clip, but we played it on my show this morning, where they ask her about some of the, the issues related to protection with her and Trump. And she's like, well, so many people are afraid of themselves, even in Florida, with the don't say we, gay law. Yeah, we do have Who, it. Stand by. Do, 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 all right, all right so I'll, I'll pause on that one. Yeah. Let's watch. Do you have full confidence in the Secret Service to I protect do. all of you? I do. You, you feel safe for you and your family? I do. But, I mean, you can go back to Ohio. Not everybody has Secret Service. And there are far too many people in our country right now who are not feeling safe. I mean, I look at Project 2025, and I look at, you know, like the don't say gay laws coming out of Florida. Members of the LGBTQ community don't feel safe right now. Um, immigrants or people with an immigrant background don't feel safe right now. Women don't feel safe right now. And so, yes, I feel safe. I have Secret Service protection. But that doesn't change my perspective on the importance of, of fighting for the safety of everybody in our country. Keep going. It's such, it's such <laughs> epic drivel. I am in Florida right now. You can say gay. Watch this. Gay. DeSantis's <laughs> goons aren't showing up. Was that pretty good? That was a pretty gay that day, was good. right? Um, With a little DeSantis's flare. goons are not bursting through the door, right? It's just nonsense. I know a lesbian in Hialeah. She's flourishing right now. It's pure drivel, but this is what they do with everything. There's no right that a gay person doesn't have here. Has this woman ever been to South South Beach, it's the most annoyingly gay place on the planet. But they want to keep people in perpetual fear of a man who literally presided over a presidency where he had lowest all-time black unemployment. He announces it at the, at the State of the Union and they basically boo him. They have everything backwards and, and these people are not journalists, they are activists and they should be ignored and mocked and people should watch the Megyn Kelly show. Uh, meanwhile, I don't even know what this so-called journalist is asking her. Is this a case of irredeemable racism that can't be mitigated by any <laughs> rational action? What? Or, okay, I'm waiting for choice B because I, I, yeah. I reject choice A in its entirety to the extent I understand it. Choice B is, is this a situation in which a federal response could help this community heal? What do you say? What kind of federal response do we need to the alleged racism in terms of you're eating our cats in Springfield, do we need like this is the way the press corps feels. This is such, it's so indicative of what we're dealing with in the national media and why people can't stand them. Megan, can I tell you something that's going to really scare you right now? You mentioned at the top of the show there are only 48 more days to the election. It's like no matter who wins, do you think any of this gets better after? We are just no. on the slide with these lunatics. I actually can give you the one version where things do get better, which is that if Trump wins by a landslide, I think there's a chance for like a resurgence of, of true Americana and, and people realizing we have to let go of some of this stuff. But they the are going to just... No, I, no, no. The media will always do its thing. But I think a certain set of sort of marginal people might be like, you know what, maybe let's let go of some of this woke craziness and let's go forward. The media, no, the media will be thrilled if Trump is president because it gets them ratings. I mean, that's the that's kind of the deal in hell that has been forged here between Trump and mm -hmm. these people, which is why they all used to love Trump. And now they hate him, but they kind of want him back because it's good that's for right. clicks. Um, but it's just watching these people do these interviews. It's so it's so profoundly embarrassing. And even the way they they speak to him, you know, I, I've interviewed Trump. You've interviewed him a mul multiple times. 
Why is it that when I interviewed Trump, I scribbled a couple lines down and then I just asked him what I was thinking when I was sitting there? You know, why is it that you've been able to actually confront him on important issues and, and still get a follow up interview with him? Because he's willing to do that. And yet look what they are doing with, again, a woman that I would say is just an avatar for the Democrat Party. It's not no one's really voting for Kamala Harris. You're just voting for someone that I suppose is reverse Trump. She does not stand for anything other than the Democrats attaining power, or I should say retaining power. She, I love that the question, the way in by this guy, Eugene Daniels of Politico, uh, is about the alleged racism in Springfield, as opposed to the fact that she caused the Haitians to be there in the first place. Their policies are what let all of these people into the country. Why isn't that the question, Eugene? You know how much my family and I love our dogs. Yes, even sweet Strudwick. I can't even imagine life without them. They've got a great life. They're lucky. But some dogs aren't. And that's why I'm so glad to tell you about Delta Rescue. It's the largest no-kill, care-for-life animal sanctuary in the world. They've rescued thousands of dogs, plus cats and horses, too. They provide all of these animals with shelter, safety, and most of all, love. And they've been doing it now for more than 45 years. Delta Rescue relies solely on contributions, and giving can bring tax benefits, too. Speak with your estate planner about how you can grow your estate while helping animals in need. Check out the estate planning tab on their website to learn more. We love our Thunder and Strudwick, but we would like other dogs who need love to find it, too. Visit DeltaRescue.org today to learn more. That's DeltaRescue.org. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.